goodness, we have some work to do today. Something I've been anticipating for a while, my Pinkton Bronze Age here. Yeah, that root network looks pretty dense. And when I filled up with fertilized water, there was gargling, there was bubbling. I'm anticipating at least some dead roots in there. It's pretty obvious to see even at the surface that there are some. But at least there was still oxygen exchange in the pot. And this orchid has been in this pot for four years. So what I'm going to try and do today, first of all, welcome and thank you for joining me. It is a beautiful, beautiful, sparkling September day here in southern Spain. There is a bit of a breeze going. I have no idea how the interference will be from my surroundings, and I will do my best to edit that out because what I want to do today is try and see if <laughs> I can do this repot real time without editing too much, simply out of a matter of interest and if anybody's curious. So random conversation will ensue depending on what I will find. The only thing I plan to edit out, and if I can, hopefully, is any noise pollution from music, anything along the lines of maybe private conversations that are happening right now in the background, and anything like a massive truck going past the patio and then hitting one of those manhole lids and doing a big massive clang. Otherwise, welcome to a real-time repot with as little interference as possible, I hope. And I wonder if I've beaten the car <laughs> that always happens to come and then sit on idle for approximately 20 minutes. That would be nice. I hope he's late. <laughs> or he, she has already been. Let's get her out and have a look. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Woohoo! Look at that. It could be better. I admit it could be much better, but this is not too shabby, not too shabby at all, considering what I put my orchids through. Right, I'm going to get you in close and we'll do a little bit of up close and personal cleanup. And of course, I'm editing out me shifting the camera around. I mean, you know, that is not something we need to take into consideration. And the big loud truck just passed while I was shifting the camera. Seems like it was meant to be to do this today. We've got some dead roots over here. Let's get this pot right here. These always surprise me when they look white like this. You would think it's alive because it's nice and plump. And then they get all squishy and nasty. <laughs> I always think, oh no, that's alive. Uh, no, it's not because clearly this one's obviously dead right here. That's that's obvious. But, you know, when they're like white, because where's the difference between here? Let me show you this white one, as it were, in comparison to the one underneath, right? Plump and white. Let me get you down a bit more. See, plump and white. And you would think, yeah, no, they're both fine. <laughs> no, they're not. All right. I did see, without having to look very deeply into the pot, surface-wise, here is something that can get taken off right here. Oh, not even with snips. That came off all by its lonesome. But where is it tangled to? Right there. Got some beautiful root tips happening. Got to be mindful of those. Let's give her her first good spray. See what we're up against. She's a bit smelly from those decayed roots. I can't have a Pinkton Bronze Age that has a gorgeous, gorgeous, like a little spicy but sweet fragrance, very floral with a hint of spice. Can't have that smell overpowered by some pungent smell that we get from decay. <laughs> Don't want to remember her like that until she blooms again next time. Old flower spikes can come off. I'm just attacking what I can see easily. Maybe I can also peel some sheaths off. 
Just want to get at what I can see easily. Work my way down and in. I mean, it's not that bad. Like I said, it could be so much better. But given certain circumstances, the fact that I don't have that much death after four years, I think that's pretty good going. Oh, you see, even this one. Even this one looked alive. Look at that compared to the one above. I touched it and it went squish on me. Ew. So, that can come off. It's a branch. The other ones down here have root tips, so we'll be mindful of that. Despite the fact that up here, where it is attached to the base, there is decayed velamen. So, I'll pick that off. <laughs> This is the nasty part about Phalaenopsis. When the root goes all ew, and it's just like a squishy worm, you know? Oh, when I was little, I didn't mind playing with worms, but I'm not little anymore. Squishy worms, ew. Yeah, I only find that phenomenon so realistic and obvious in Phalaenopsis roots that they look all plump and then you touch it and it, it just oozes. Ugh. Well, actually it squirts <laughs> goo. Okay. There's more of that in down there. But the root itself is still alive further in, so we'll leave that. I'm a little bit late, I think, with doing this repot now. Not because of what's coming seasonal-wise, fall, winter, cold temperatures, but just time-wise. She could have been repotted so much sooner. But then again, you know, we have obligations. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's another sheath that I can take off. This root is also a goner right here. I hope I'm taking it off at the base and then not finding green roots all the way down because <laughs> we've seen that one already happen. We've seen that the roots can be absolutely fine. Nope, we did the right thing. We wanna watch this, trigger alert, trigger alert. Ew, gross. <laughs> Oh, grossness. <laughs> Ugh, gotta wash my hands. I'm sorry. I can't do this. I can't do this. Just keep rinsing. Ew. <laughs> Even though I know what's coming, it's like, ugh, yuck. There's another one in here, but it's a more of a drier version. <laughs> Motorbike just went by. Unless, one more time, one more time, one more time, you. <laughs> okay, Nina, stop it. I said real time and I didn't say play time. <laughs> oh, well, by the way, as and when I can, I always put timestamps into my description. So if all of this is just a little bit too much for you and you want to skip ahead, Please feel free to do so. Anyway, oh, somebody's blonde hair got in there. Not mine, mine is gray, but check this out. Beautiful ruby root tip. Ooh, I've been watching that at the rim of the pot. Can you see? Oh, there's two. Okay, perfect. See them, see them. Look at that on the other side. Oh, I love orchid roots. They are so fascinating. The things they do. The things they can do. So amazing. I do want to get my tweezers though. Because there's still some dead velamen in here. Which, you know what? It's not that big a deal. Really. Going into inorganic media, it really is not that big a deal. But while we're at it, right? I'm going to leave that spike on so that it can deal with itself eventually. A little bit more of a sheath down there. I also have, sorry about that, 
There's an old spike, but it's so wedged in, I'm leaving it in there. More dead sheath. We have some root nubbins. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I like it. I like it like that. And more sheaths. I think I have a root nubbin here that didn't quite progress, which is a shame. Right here, maybe it will activate itself again. We'll see. We shall see. Hey, if I hear any static in this audio as well, I'm going to try and edit it out. That was the most bizarre thing the other day. It really took my confidence for filming away. You're all into a filming project and then boom, you go to download your clip and it is just useless. Okay, sorry about that. Focus Nina and focus camera. Look at this gorgeous root right here. It looks a bit nasty up here. And it's a branch of another root right there. Hang on, this one, and look at that velamen. Yet it is doing super well at the end. So we're gonna maintain it and just remove the velamen, the decayed part, all the way to where it is still attached to what is viable. And then we're going to wash our hands again because nasty. This one looks bad, but it's okay. It's firm. And all this black up here, it's fine, it's still firm, so we'll leave that. And methinks this is about it, this is about good enough. I mean, I could go babbling on and on, but you know, let me know if you've got time for that and we'll do this again the next time an opportunity poses itself. So, what I then do is I'm gonna put her in the meantime into the pot that still has the water from which she was soaking in. Did that even make sense? From which she was soaking in? Well, she was going to be put into a pot of water, soak away just only while I prepare for her new pot. And, you know, remove this, which I do very easily by sliding the tray away and cheating and putting it behind me. <laughs> and then, you know, off camera, as you do when you have a cooking show, something I prepared in advance, a new pot. The previous pot was 15 centimeters. We are bumping her up to 18 centimeters and we're going into a square pot for no other reason, except I think that they're pretty and these inner pots probably won't break, even if I did use bleach on them, but I'm not going to ever use bleach on them. So I'm just gonna take measures and start putting things into square pots as and when I have the opportunity. And I fill everything with water to make sure that after the velamen has been rudely interrupted with, when I pour in the fresh leka, I am not going to risk bashing the velamen beyond what it has already had to endure. So we are ready to go with the first load. And we have hair in there. My goodness, we are not that hairy of a family, I promise you. Well, not the four-legged creatures included, but <laughs> the rest of us. Okay, so I want her in the middle as best as possible. And of course, I have a very stubborn, sticking outy kind of rooty there. But I want to get her down as low as possible to begin with seeing as she was already leaning in her previous pot. So I want to make sure that the roots that are here, that they are not like 
you know, poking out of the pot simply because they were in the pot before and now I am correcting her position by putting her upright again. As far as I'm concerned, lean away in the years to come. But right now, just, you know, do what I am asking you to do. Thank you. And I'm using small lecker because novelty fowls, Phalaenopsis species, and I've just lost a lecker ball. Because, back to what we were saying, novelty fowls and Phalaenopsis species like their water. And for that reason, small lecker is my go-to. And I'm working my way from the front to the back because I want to have the orchid in position so that eventually I can let go and tap the pot. And boy, was that a noisy traffic sequence right there. I am telling you, this is going to be interesting to listen back to. And I'm going to try and stick to my plan as best as possible and make this a real-time repot. Only editing out what I set out to edit out right at the beginning. Let's twist again like we did last summer. Let's twist again like we did last year. Do you remember when? Hey, yes, that little action puts the lecker into place super easy using the buoyancy of the water without me having to stick my chubby, clumsy fingers into there and probably break a root tip. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And we fill her up again and just check the position from all sides, you know, left, right. If I go to the back, you'll be seeing my face, which at the moment is not a pretty sight. We'll stick to the orchid being in the viewfinder. But I do like her position a lot. And are you stuck or... Ah, you're not stuck. You can go in and so can all of you. The more we get into position before we put in the next load of lecker, the better, because then they will not be, you know, creating a form of lecker gridlock. <laughs> and everything can just, you know, follow suit and fall in nicely. Nicely, nicely. Next load. You see, I'm not even holding on to the orchid anymore. We are going to keep targeting the front. The back is always easy. Her position is more important. The more I can secure her position in the front by adding more media, the safer it's going to be when I start adding the back and she won't push herself so easily into a different position that I don't want her in. You know, orchids have this affinity. Every time you move the pot after a new repot, the orchid itself thinks, well, hey, I can lift myself out of the pot. And you're going, no, no, you cannot. So we hold on to the orchid and we just make sure that we hold her in place when we do the Twist again, like we did last summer. Ooh, let's twist again, like we did last year. Do you remember when? There we go. Are we there yet? Doot, doot. You know, like when you're on a journey with mom and dad. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Not quite. So, more from the front because this is working out really well. What I'm trying to achieve is not get the base of the orchid down so close to the media, but I want to make sure I have enough media that covers the roots because they are clearly accustomed to a wet environment. You see that color? That root should not be exposed to any fresh air, seeing as that would make it perish. It is not used to that. The velamen cannot handle the circumstances and conditions of being exposed to fresh air. Just a little bit in the back. Let me turn her so you see what's going on here. Ooh. Can you see what I see? La la. Check that root tip out. Oh, you're gorgeous. You are gorgeous. But wait, there's more. Okay, fill her up, drain the water. And let's pour. I am very mindful of this root tip right here as well. 
Let's let the lecker do its thing over there. Not Nina's hands, fingers, or nails. My phalanges. <laughs> I'm okay. I only had tea today. Promise. I just thought, way, we're going to do a real-time Phalaenopsis repot, and I can't tell you how much I was looking forward to that. Now, before we do the jiggle jiggle, we're going to fill her right up. And now, jiggle and pull up ever, ever so gently. I mean, it's not a yank. It's to see if she wants to give and just rise up a little bit. Just a little bit. Ooh, ah, uh, just a little bit. Ooh, ah, uh, a little bit more. Ooh. Uh, just a little bit. You are what I'm looking for. I don't even know if those were the words, but they made sense to me. And I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do, 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 do. We need the tag. Let's get the tag in. That'll be okay. I know where the roots are. Back in here. Sans résistance. Back we go. All right, we are going to drain the pot and see how the lecker settles if we have yet to add more. Can I have some more, please, sir? <laughs> I should actually ask you to put into the comments the artist and the title of every song I've referenced in this repot today. <laughs> Can you see how breezy it is? Whoa, dang. We're on the east side, just in case I didn't mention that. Okay, so the pot has drained. I will now cut to showing you the level of the orchid in the pot. <laughs> so yeah, here comes an edit. And now you're back from outer space. All right, okay, let's go and move her away and I'm gonna show you why I'm not using the water that we just used to fill the leka up with because look at all the debris. Why fuss around and try to get an orchid as clean as possible into a new pot and then pour that in there? It's not that bad to be honest with you, but you know, we can do better. So I'm gonna pour this into a Benjamini Ficus pot here on the patio. I'm gonna move this one out of the way. I'm going to move my clean lecker also out of the way, and I'm cheating. Everything's behind me. Well, you should see what's in front of me too, but... <laughs> and then I'm just going to rinse my pot. Because, you know, pedantic. Comme ça. Clean. And again, that's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here she comes. And she snaps beautifully into place. Ha! Huh. How about that? If I'm not mistaken, there are a few little edits that I have to do basically, you know, also for copyright reasons when it comes to the Big Boss YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to be at 24 minutes or thereabouts. I am going to fill up the reservoir only with plain RO water now because she's had everything she needed up to this repot. Full fertilizer, 300 parts per million. I didn't soak with CalMag this time around because she had that a week ago. So plain RO water for no other reason other than she has had plenty, you know. And if you are so inclined to watch her leaves become all nice and purdy, which is not going to last very long because she still lives outside in the deep south annex, and it's quite dusty at the moment. And should it rain again, well, we're going to have ourselves another Dalmatian styly looking Phalaenopsis <laughs> pink and bronze age. But you know what? I love it. Good old nature at work here. And that should be just fine for demonstration purposes. <laughs> <laughs> not because she needed it. Honestly, I do not clean my orchids until they really, really are ready to go inside and everybody then gets a good once over and a clean of the leaves. And then, hmm, we do it all again in spring. We are in front of the camera and we need to keep up appearances. Wiping the leaves is never a bad idea. 
Do you want to see the mayhem in front of me? La la. Well, to the left and to the right of me. <laughs> Pretty much this was real time. And if you spent your time with me throughout watching in real time, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much. I know this may have posed some questions. You may be scratching your head and wondering if I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I will not tell you what the acronym stands for in my mind, but if you are out there and are similar to me, then you know what F-I-N-E really stands for. <laughs> and if you want to let me know that you do know, leave that in the comments as well. Thank you for watching. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye.